exceeding capabilities prepared for install for sight and sound. It's upwardly and downwardly compatible with games and graphics that makes others look like mere child's play. Step into the next dimension and get the new Turbo Duo sold at stores near you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Player One Start. In the previous video, I actually showed how I got my Turbo Duo console fixed. It did have some issues and I am very glad I was able to get those fixed. If you haven't seen that video yet, I definitely recommend giving it a view before or after this video. The choice is up to you. In this video, I'm actually going to show how I got my TurboGrafx CD console also repaired. It seems like these things are prone to failure. And there are a couple reasons why for that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. In an earlier Retro Game Finds video, I actually showcased that I got a TurboGrafx-16 unit with the TurboGrafx CD in it. The actual TurboGrafx was a surprise to me, I thought I was just getting the carrying case and the CD add-on. One thing I really like about having the CD add-on, even if I'm not using the CD, is the fact that it has composite video out the back. Without that, or the Turbo Booster, the console only supports RF out natively. When I first got this system, everything was working great. However, I noticed that every once in a while the CD drive did not want to spin up. Doing some quick research online, I found that it's usually because of a gear inside of the system. My problem with replacing this gear was just time. With working two jobs and maintaining this channel, I actually did not have enough time to spend taking apart the console and learning how to replace the gear and any other problems I would encounter along the way. Again, let's welcome back Chris to the channel, and he will walk you through what he did to fix my console. Alright, so here's the inside of the CD drive. Um, I've got the job all finished up, but figured I'd point out everything I did um, before I close it up and get it ready to ship back. Um, anyways, the main issue, there, there was a couple things that needed to be taken care of, but the main issue, um, you can see the center gear here for the lens motor. I uh, went ahead and replaced that. Uh, the original, which I saved over here that I can show you, you can see it's uh, super yellow. And uh, this one actually isn't broken. L lots of times when these get older, they literally just fall apart and I'll open up the CD drives and they'll just be in pieces. But uh, what happens even if they don't fall apart, they become useless because what happens is the inner hole that I'm pointing at here actually swells and tightens and then it doesn't spin freely anymore on this metal um, shaft that's there through the center. So <laughs> it just sticks and won't move. And I've seen people try to re-grease them up. That is not smart to do because it's just going to get stuck again. So uh, if anybody's watching and listening to this and your gears get stuck, don't keep greasing them up. It, it just makes things worse because I've seen grease in all kinds of areas from people doing that for these gears and then part of it gets on the lens and it usually ruins the lens. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't spray it with WD-40. Don't put new, uh, lithium grease on that. It, it doesn't need to just change the gear. Um, okay. Uh, this, um, I replace this piece of tape over time. The tape here falls off, uh, which holds the lens ribbon cable in place. So it doesn't get, you know, all, all tangled up and everything here. Um, but it, that, that's not a huge deal, but still, still important to change because the tape goes bad. Uh, another thing I did is I removed, um, a grounding strip that goes on the, uh, larger lens ribbon cable here. Uh, here, here's the actual grounding strip. Um, the reason I removed that is it's not needed. Um, what's weird is, uh, a lot of, Japanese drives don't actually have that in there. I don't know why it was extra for some of the U.S. drives, but um, besides it not being needed, it poses a problem as these drives get older because the lens ribbon cable here, it kind of starts bending a certain way. And what happens is when the motherboard is put back in here, part of this lens ribbon cable over time, I don't know if it's due to heat or just age, it starts bending closer and closer to the motherboard. And when that grounding strip is on there, it ends up bumping parts of the motherboard sometimes and shorting things out. It usually doesn't break anything, but it shorts things out to the point the drive doesn't work right. So I, just every drive I work on, I take that, uh, that grounding strip out of there. Um, okay, uh, some other things I did. I replaced 
these capacitors in this row here. Uh, these are the ones, if they go bad, these are the ones that typically go bad. Usually the U.S. drives are a bit more reliable than the Japanese ones. I don't know if it's because they're a little bit newer or if they were just different capacitors altogether. But um, usually the U.S. drives don't need it, but I replace these anyways just because, uh, I mean, they could go bad in the future, but I like to just do them so that way if I put the drive back together and test it out and things don't work, I know at least it's not the capacitors because I took care of this important row here. I've never seen any of these other ones go bad. So uh, really, if people are doing that, it's not needed. You're wasting your time. <laughs> um, I suppose some people like to just do it to know that it's done just for you know peace of mind. But I've yet to see any of these other caps go bad. I've never worked on one and somebody sent it back to me later because of a problem and it was because of one of the caps. It just doesn't happen. Now, the Japanese drives are different. Those usually have some other ones that go bad. Besides these, um, there's a big row here that typically goes bad. Uh, so I changed those out in those. But uh, as far as the U.S. drives, you should be fine uh, with the caps generally. Um, okay, some other stuff I did here. Um, but let me think. I took that out. Okay, uh, on the back side of the motherboard here, these grounding points and even the uh, the positive for the AC adapter plug, I mean, not a huge deal because it gets its power from here when it's in the turbo dock. But if you were ever to use the drive separately, um, this has to generally be resoldered. It, it kind of gets cracked over time. Um, the solder just loses good connection. Same with these grounding points. Those need to be resoldered. So I reflow new solder on there. Um, let me see what else I did here. Um, oh, uh, resolder this grounding wire for the case for when things go back together. And uh, I put a piece of electrical tape here for the screw that goes in there. Uh, all the Japanese drives have them, but usually, I don't know why, sometimes the U.S. drives don't have electrical tape there to protect part of the board when the board is screwed back together. Um, that is it for the most part. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Uh, do, 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 let's see here. Oh, I re-greased the lens rail because that helps with audio dropouts. And um, I did make some uh, adjustments to the lens here. It needed a slight adjustment. For the lens gain and that doesn't mean the lens is going bad it's i wouldn't worry it's only when like extreme adjustments are made that i sometimes start to worry about it but if, if i'm just turning one of these barely and it gets things working better then then it's nothing to worry about the the lens is still good to go so uh anyways i'll uh put this back together and get it ready to ship out so that is, again, another fantastic repair job. The only thing I was going to do to that system was actually replace that gear. I knew that that was most likely the culprit for the drive not spinning up, but I wouldn't have gone as far as to replace any of the capacitors on the board. As to me, they did look fine, but I am definitely grateful that he was very proactive and hit those capacitors that would have failed very soon. So again, I want to send out my deepest thanks to Chris for fixing these consoles for me. And if you guys have a TurboGrafx unit that you would like to see repaired, this is a non-paid endorsement. I'm definitely going to leave a link down in the description below. I actually paid for this repair, and this is not solicited in any way. This is my genuine recommendation. He does quality work. And now that both consoles have been repaired, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the games that I have.
The top three heavyweight contenders. Tied for the third spot are Cetiosaurus, Antarctosaurus, and Rebacosaurus. The fossil fragments that have been found of these behemoths indicate that each easily weighed more than 50 tons. So again, that is a fantastic result, and I cannot wait to finally start work on the Ultimate TurboGrafx CD review. But, as of the recording of this video, I actually still have to finish up the Ultimate TurboGrafx-16 review, which will continue next week here on Player One Start. Remember, if you like what you see, please click that like button below. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked about today's video. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and stay tuned because I have more content coming. I will see you all in the next one. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.